What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, April 23rd, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the OK Beast Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. What's up, Greg? Not much, man. What's up with you? Not much, man. Just chilling, having a good Thursday morning. Uh, I have bad news for you. Oh, no. And I know, you know, you're above it all. You don't let the comments get to you. The Games Cast is up right now. Our game of the year so far. We all come out, we say our pieces, we do our things. They audibled, as you know, and tossed Barrett mm. in there, who started fucking talking about Persona 4 or 5 Royal, Persona 5 Royal. Mm. And all the fucking comments are about how great Barrett is and how right Barrett is and how I've I know it's the worst. For 70 it's fucking the worst, hours isn't it? Barrett, so I was like, oh my God. I, know, I never read the comments. And that was the, that's the first time in weeks that I decided, hey, I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to read the comments for this video yeah, because yeah. the games cast, you know, I thought was a really good episode. It is a great episode. Have, a lot of great things to say. I go in there. It's just all Barrett praise. It's like, it sucks. Yeah. What about us? Like, what about you and why, me? You know, what's the point of even putting out an episode if you guys are just going to praise Barrett? You yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, the good news is, you know, that there are there's a bunch of Animal Crossing people supporting me. I saw no support for you. So that's helpful. You know I what mean, I mean? I understand. Yeah. 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 But I can't believe that Barrett's getting all this praise. Kevin, can you? It's upsetting. Barrett. It, it's I'm it's funny because it's an old game. It came out last year, right? This Exa is just a no, 2017. It came out in 2017. What? We didn't yes. even know Barrett back then. That's crazy. I'm pretty sure he was 16. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. In 2017, yeah, that checks out. Because he was born in 2001. It's embarrassing. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I guess I guess Barrett the solution seems... is just to keep Barrett off the shows because then he won't be praised. I agree. All right. Well, we've got some we've got some work done here. Kevin, can you make that happen? easily <laughs> thank you kevin that's what i need to hear right now uh other than that you're okay bless yeah i'm doing well we're doing both wearing well. long sleeve t-shirts that's cool we are yeah and you, you're wearing a playstation uh t-shirt i'm wearing a wu-tang clan shirt kevin you're wearing a short sleeve shirt don't even why did you even bring your camera up for that i said me too and i thought my arms wouldn't show <laughs> oh yeah no. uh, i was lying know, you don't have that kind of wingspan <laughs> All right, enough about this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Xbox's next move, Animal Crossing's financial peril, and so much more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash games with your questions, comments, concerns, squad up requests, and everything under the video game sun. Of course, on patreon.com slash games, you can get the show ad-free. You can get it with the post-show. You can can just be part of the show and have a great time and support us. If you think we're doing a good job, hang out with other like-minded friends and hang out. It's just great. If you have no bucks tossed our way, though, it's no big deal. You can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. You can go to roosterteeth.com. You can go to podcast services around the globe each and every weekday. Of course, you could watch the show live, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. It goes up when it goes up there. You're just here for the ride. Whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? But you do have a special job that I didn't open. You need to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you can write in and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody else. Like I was just talking about who watches it later on YouTube. Rooster teeth, all that jazz. Uh, housekeeping for you tonight's the night ladies and gentlemen we are doing a grime craft concert in animal crossing it is grime craft cross kind of funny you can of course come be a part of it at 7 p.m pacific time uh twitch.tv slash kind of funny games uh grime craft is doing a dj set in animal crossing and real life he'll be streaming to our channel uh joey and myself will be hanging out and partying in his world you can join his world he was using one of those services where you could queue up and then when people leave you get the dodo code but apparently they've that that site's like crap now. So he's thinking about doing musical chairs where then the person who's last will leave or maybe people just cycle in and out on their own. But it doesn't even matter if you're in there or not. We're going to hang out. I'll be in the chat, chatting it up with you, chopping it up as the kids say. And then after Grimecraft set, we're going to do a little bit of a, we have cool friends, catch up with him, talk to him a little bit, see what's going on with Grimey in these days. So again, 7 p.m. tonight, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Immediately following Games Daily, when I remember, Kevin, help me remember, I will reveal. Help me remember what? I'm about to say, I will reveal the shirt. We have a concert shirt for this event, this kind of funny oh. Grimecraft collab. We have a collab shirt made by one of the kind of funny best friends. You can go to my Twitter, twitter.com slash gameovergreggy. See it there, get it through the code, or we're going to try to get it into uh, Grimey's uh, Able Sister shop today so that if you make it to the island, you can get it, but you can also just download it ahead of time, which might be easier. And I think it will be because there'll be a million things going on. But like I said, 7 p.m., twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. And then, then when did you want sorry, the reminder? 
When do I uh, like when the show ends and we do the post? Oh, you, you'll be into screencast, won't you? Yeah. Oh no, blessing! You got to help me remember. All right. All right. I'll remember. Oh, I got to okay. remember. Here's what I'll do, everybody. Because when you know, never asks Greg, "How are you doing?" And Greg, how are you doing, what's, Greg? I'm okay. I'm holding it together. Well, actually, I'm gonna have a really good morning. We'll get into that later, later, later in the show. Uh -oh. You'll see why. Um. So what after the show ends? What I'm supposed to do is obviously go put in the metadata and give you a headline, right? And so I often don't forget metadata. And so I go mm, in there. That sounds and so I'm, so I'm, I'm starting it right here in front of everybody's eyes. All right. So there you go. 423. Bam. And then what I'm putting in is the headline is Greg tweet shirt. And then Smart. that, will, that will remind me. Then I have to do it. You know what I mean? Of now, course, you're not Greg see that and think that's the headline of the show and put it into the show already? Maybe. So if this show goes up as Greg tweet shirt, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's on me. I shouldn't have confused cool Greg. We love him very much. Um, beyond that, beyond, beyond, uh, tomorrow, Friday, April, beyond. Yeah, April, beyond. Thank you very much, Kevin. Beyond, April twenty fourth, right? Uh, it is the release of Predator Hunting Grounds. You know, I've been excited about it. At the last second yesterday, Ilphonic hit us up, and we're going to do some sponsored streams for them. So tomorrow, Friday, three p.m. Pacific, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Me and the kind of funny crew are all playing Predator, and I will be fucking them up. I will just be tear. Are you ready to die, Blessing? Because I was so good at Friday the oh, 13th. I'm going to kill you. I'm so ready, man. So you don't ready. even know what you're getting into. Like, you know what I mean? Not at all. Like, you're a punk. You're a punk kid. Uh, so yeah, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Uh, Predator uh, stream tomorrow on PlayStation 4, uh, 3 p.m. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. It's going to be super fun, super exciting. I can't wait. Already couldn't wait. Now I'm getting to, uh, out there to play with you guys. It's going to be great. Uh, and then next week we're going to do some where you can actually play with us. It's going to be good. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Mohammed Mohammed, a.k.a. Momo. Al Tribesman, the Predator. This is not part of the sponsorship. And then Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by Brooklyn and an Express VPN, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Three items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. I like that, Kevin. You know, nobody gives you credit, Kevin, for putting a different twist on it every day. And so Thank I'm happy you to so give you much. No problem. I appreciate it. You know what Thank I mean? Thank you. Uh, number one. All right. Is this Xbox event happening or what? Uh, over on Twitter, Woggerman <laughs> hit up Phil Spencer and said, Hi, Xbox P3. How are you feeling about the eventual reveals of new games and new info on the Series X later this year? How is planning going? There are definitely a lot of hungry fans out here. To which Phil responded, Review plans yesterday for continued sharing through launch. Team is doing great. I'm sorry. Team is doing great work and adapting. I've never been more excited about Xbox plans. We've heard you. You want transparency slash authenticity. We plan to keep showing that. We plan to keep showing that way. Next step is not too much of a wait. And then he put parentheses games. Now, blessing. Number one, first and foremost, mm -hmm. and I think this always goes without saying, Phil Spencer's the fucking man. I love him so much. Goddamn no, how many people would have avoided and I'm even hey Greg, when's the fucking live event? I don't know, goddamn no. But like so many people would just blow past that tweet and not do it. Phil comes out and gives an actual response to just Woggerman, who is just to my knowledge, a, a random person on Twitter, right? It's not mm -hmm. Ryan McCaffrey hitting him up or anything. Just hey, like, how's it going? And Phil's like, all right, I'll give you an honest, authentic response and say the right things, right? Of like we know what you're looking for. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Like I, I Phil Spencer, uh being the one who's the head of Xbox right now, right? Like he is he is he he's always been very open and very direct with his with answering people um he the answers he gives are usually like great answers like you know hearing him say that like yeah we re we reviewed plans yesterday uh yeah. and are for continued sharing through launch right like it's him it's him talking about how yeah like we're we're making things happen right like we've had reports over the last couple of weeks about how Things are in the air, right? Like, I mean, COVID COVID nineteen has kind of thrown everything sideways. But mm -hmm. as far as what reveal plans for consoles are, right? Like, that has kind of thrown things into the air for both Sony and Microsoft. And so to hear yeah, it, it seems like we come out. Sorry, for oh, just to give context, yeah. right? I feel like the Bloomberg report from PlayStation was more behind the curtain in hey, here's how plans aren't working the way they wanted, right? Where it was PS five was planning a reveal in May. That's up in the air because it was supposed to be a press conference. Now, can you yeah. use it? They can't press. What are they going to do? Whereas I think it's Windows Central's Roundup, right? Which is a collection of a bunch of different stuff that they've heard. And we talked about yesterday on the show. And I think we're going to talk about it here in a second. Uh, is more of like what's going on with Xbox's conference for the spring. Yeah. And so like for Phil Spencer to come out and be like, yeah, we we reviewed this literally yesterday, right? It shows that 
you know, he's being open and honest and, you know, it imbues faith in what Xbox has going on and what that yeah. conversation looks like for them. Um, you know, I, the, if you go through like the window central thing, right? Like their, the report, um, there are rumors for May and I think that lines up. That makes sense, right? Like that's, around, that's around the time you would expect, especially given off or uh, uh, coming off of last gen's reveal, right? Like the Xbox one was revealed, uh, in May, like right before E3 time. And so, like, this lines up with that, but then also, in terms of timing with everything, right, like, there's also reports from Daniel Ahmad, who was talking about how, uh, because of COVID-19, right, things are, you'll, you're going to see some reveal, and this is a thing that I think anybody can kind of extrapolate, but he, ba he basically said, you're going to see some reveals come early in terms of, like, the console reveals. Yeah. But then also, like, some stuff get revealed later than they would have. Um, and if... Like if I had to if I had to guess based on what Daniel Mott is talking about, I would say that like the Microsoft reveal is probably one of those things that we're gonna see sooner than later. Well, it's interesting because I felt like reading into uh, Daniel's tweet, which you had in one of the games dailies. I forget if it was. Do you remember if it was Monday or Tuesday? Because I'd like to bring that into. Uh, I'm looking right. Or am I, it's probably Monday because I feel like I talked to, okay. to Tim about it, but I don't know if it was in the doc. I'm so sorry you had to deal with Tim. Really? I thought it was because yeah. I remember scrolling through stuff. Oh, I it, stuff. but maybe it, I'm might, wrong. it might be there then. Hold on, I'm looking at the rope report. There, there are quite a few Daniel Ahmad tweets also. He tweets a lot. And I think he was going off during the weekend. You know, but he was, it was all good <laughs> stuff he was saying. All right. Well, all of this, I think when I read it, my first reaction, and granted, I have it on the brain that I think the PlayStation was going to do an event or is going to do an event in May. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's interesting that as soon as he said that, and this is in the, he said it post Bloomberg. Now that you're dealing with, Microsoft and the roundup getting hotter, I think, from this part from Windows Central. So if you don't know the Windows Central thing, you missed Games Daily yesterday. Uh, we talked about it again. We'll talk about it right now. But Jez Corden at Windows Central put together a roundup that talked about uh, Xbox Series X, a.k.a. the Lockhart, which would be a smaller box, obviously, or a smaller, less powerful box, basically taking over for what the Xbox One X would be. A new wireless headset. But then a section called, what about Microsoft's Xbox events in the spring? Whether Xbox, like, whether Xbox Lockhart will break cover in May is unknown, but based on its imminent take-home status and the oddly coincidental and wholly separated, separately sourced timing of the surface rumors suggest an early May reveal could be on the money. With E3 2020 canceled, Microsoft perhaps has a bit more leeway in terms of what it can do with regards to marketing and its upcoming events, spreading them across a wider range of dates. A couple of Xbox YouTubers with good track records for accurate information have suggested a May event as well to coincide with the previously announced digital showcases Microsoft mentioned would replace its E3 showing in June. We've heard Microsoft may also be gearing up to show off a few upcoming games as part of its May press releases. Uh, yeah, so, so. Long-standing rumors of a Fable reboot under Playground Games make for an obvious candidate, but we've also barely seen anything from Halo Infinite which is supposedly launching later this year, presuming, quote, work from home delays are avoided. Whether this will be a full-blown showcase like an inside Xbox, a trailer reveal as we saw for Hellblade 2, or a third-party deep dive with expertise of outlets like Digital Foundry is completely unknown. But as they say, there's typically no smoke without fire. So I think it's interesting to talk about that, to talk about... Um, yesterday's games cat or games daily where we talked about this and there was the conversation and then you're wrong brought up the I, the timing that when phil spencer said hey i'm taking uh xbox series x home right or i'm to screw mm -hmm. around with it and then just a few, matter of days but a few weeks or whatever somewhere in that window it was then revealed at game awards that this lines up in the same way that if you were suddenly starting to talk about hey, what's going on and where we're moving and what's going on in terms of there's the rumor uh, about Lockhart in particular was, hey, they're starting to take this thing home. If that's happening, then it will line up again, pointing to this may reveal similar to what we always talk about or have been talking about with the dual sense controller, right? That, hey, this is shipping out to developers. So we fucking have to show it to you now. Otherwise, it's yeah. only a matter of time before somebody puts up a photo. My question for you is, what do you think this Xbox event looks like? Because this is the thing that came up when I talked to Imran on one of the previous shows. Uh, right before the last Inside Xbox, me and him were theorizing, like, are, is Inside Xbox just going to take place from their homes? And sure enough, the In Inside Xbox event, like, did take place uh, via Discord, right? Like, we have it right now. Yeah. And it was uh, it was uh, four people, right, in, in their screens. It was, like, Major Nelson and a few other people uh, at home, like, via webcams presenting things. Mm -hmm. Do you think the, the Xbox event has that same sort of feel to it? Because I imagine, like, they want it... They want this event to to be big for them, right? Like they want this event to come off as 
like as professional and as put together as possible because they're presenting a new uh well they've already presented their, their box but they're presenting their whole like the features and the big games and this is the big blowout for xbox series x sure. um, and possibly xbox series s what do you think that then looks like I think for the big blowout, because again, they have, to, you know, they talked about when they did the inside Xbox, right? That this is what it's going to be like going forward. We're going to be doing stuff like this. This will be inside Xbox. This is how we're going to try to communicate some stuff. I think those continue to be that way. I think the big, let's talk about the Xbox Series X. Let's get into the games. Let's get into that. I think that plays out more like an Xbox version of a Nintendo Direct. And I think that with obviously i mean even with us and how we're doing games daily right now and all of our shows right and that's being live streamed which i think is one of the reasons you sometimes see quality dip right if i'm xbox and i'm wrapping my head around this and i'm pointing back to exactly what phil says and what i think xbox has been so fucking good at doing right we've heard you you want transparency and authenticity i think you are doing that phil spencer is getting a green screen at his house and they're sending him some lights and they're sending him the capture equipment or whatever. And he's setting that up to give you the welcome of what's up, everybody. Welcome to the, you know, the reveal of the Xbox Series X or whatever they call this uh, Xbox event. Right. And immediately mm -hmm. from the top, acknowledge, of course, like this isn't how we plan to do it. Obviously, the pandemic's changed thing. We probably don't say pandemic. You don't want to put a damper on it. But you acknowledge yeah. that. Yep. This is it. This is weird. This is me on a green screen. And maybe it doesn't look as great with whatever Xbox logo is behind them. But we're super excited to talk to you about the next generation of Xbox, where we're taking the brand. So let's get right into it and then i think it's packages and i think it's that phil is the and it could be major nelson and it could be actually a hodgepodge of phil major nelson is so on and so forth the faces you know from xbox right but i think it's them introducing things and in what it is so it is phil being like all right cool here's what it is and it's a polished trailer you know running through, and it can be a you know a dev diary kind of trailer where they're talking over like oh we put this many teraflops in it. it's done this and this is blah 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 mm -hmm. but i think it's that i think it's graphs i think it's you know it is a polished package in the same way you would expect from a polished Nintendo Direct, but I do think it is oozing with their personalities. And I do think that it is like, you know, up next, you know, it's a game you've been excited for since we debuted at a Game Awards. Let's talk about the next Hellblade. Our friends at Ninja Theory have been working real hard. Let's kick it over to them. And it's the exact same thing from them of them on a webcam being like, we are super excited. Here's a new trailer, blah, 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 blah. I think you weave it together that way, acknowledging that this isn't what you want. This isn't how we expected it or how we wanted to present it necessarily, but you just want to know about the fucking games. You just want to know the information and you're all in the same boat as us, right? Transparency and authenticity. I think getting out there already and saying that, I think, you know, kind of paves the way. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how they pull this off because I think for them to kind of be, be thrusted into having to figure out that solution is going to be different from them like choosing to go that direction. Because State of yeah. Play, for example, for a PlayStation, right? Like that's the thing that they made happen because they wanted they 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 want state of play to be a thing from or from did. from the Xbox well yeah but from from Xbox side right like they have they have inside Xbox which is somewhat of a different thing from what you sure. see from state of play and Nintendo Direct right that is, that is very much like a we're sitting in a studio we're interviewing developers we're getting into the nitty gritty of say like an update for Sea of Thieves or like a state of state of decay drop or something like that if I can stop you for me personally inside Xbox always reminds me of if you this is and i know i'm old uh core remember when playstation during the ps3 era, mm -hmm. era did core with veronica belmont it reminds me of hey we're gonna make a video magazine right where there's these yeah. features and there's these things and there's these personalities but it's it's produced it's not and i'm not i'm not shitting on it obviously because i host shit like this all the time it's not the authentic it's me looking into the camera talking to you. It's us talking to devs. It's us talking to each other. It's this hodgepodge of a magazine podcast video thing, right? Yeah, it's almost like like X Player Attack of the Show from G4, right. yeah, but like exactly, more exactly. focused on the brand. Um, but they have that for that. But then they also have the XO events, right? And I feel like that's been having those two sides of the coin for Xbox has worked pretty well over the last couple of years. I've never really really been on the mind that Xbox needs a Nintendo Direct style um, event. But now that they are at a place where XO can't really happen for the next couple of years, I think Microsoft was one of the companies that came out and said, like, oh, yeah, we're not doing live events for the next uh, year and a half like, until fall 2021. Like, that's we're not going to have live events. No. Um, that being the case. But then also, yeah, this console need, needing to be re revealed in a way that, you know, is produced and is, you know, packaged up in a way that everybody can look at and be like, oh, no, yeah, like this, like in a way that, that you're not necessarily thinking about the pandemic going on right now, right? Like, they they kind of got to get past that. Yeah. And so they're kind of being forced to 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 do this 
what whatever this event may be, right? If it is like a Nintendo Direct style thing, I'm curious to see like how that pans out for them and if they're able to stick that landing. So I have two things I want to go there, but they're two different tracks. So I'll put it in your head before it because I think I want to j- jump off of what you're because I think it'll be shorter. Mm-hmm. For for keeping the back of your head or you know tie a string around your finger so you remember, I want to know what you think it would look like because I, I just gave you my pitch for it. I want to know if, what you actually think it would be. But what mm-hmm. I think is interesting about this is that I would love to know if internally PlayStation is kicking themselves for taking the road they took, right? Because they made a conscious decision years a few years ago, but I mean, definitely since the launch of the PlayStation 4, right? Of like, cool, the games are going to speak for themselves. The PlayStation brand is going to speak for itself. We're going to, you know, bring Shuhei back. We're not, you know, Adam and Gio, or we used to be on stage at PSX and E3s. They're not anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Sean was the face. Now Sean's no longer there. And so for that was fine and i think you know as you look at 2019 and like we talked about on ps i love you this week you see these four uh state of plays there with the disembodied voice just guiding you through what these games are that's all well and good but now to get to 2020 where i do feel they've painted themselves into a corner of fuck we can't how do you let the brand speak for itself when you can't do the things you can't do the shows the way you or you can't showcase the way you wanted to or what you were going to right like they clearly had a plan for what they wanted to do leading to this press conference and or whatever is going to be whatever live event and maybe i'm talking up my ass and this doesn't affect them at all but in my head i think the fact that they don't have a front facing i'm in front of the camera and i am playstation person that people connect with and you can i that true that's jim ryan but jim ryan doesn't have the love behind him that shu did or or does i should say shu does geo did adam did and granted these are different different scenarios and everything else but even sean Layden, i think sean was like a presenter right like and he grew into yeah. that role he definitely wasn't uh, and when he first started i remember watching him after jack trenton left you're like oh man this is tough shoes to fill here but mm-hmm. to get to where you are now where i think xbox is fucking primed for this where they're like yep i'm oh, yeah. Phil spencer and not only am i going to go on a uh, podcast unlock at ign just randomly during this uh, uh um pandemic or not only are we going to do gamer tag radio be on them and promote it on xbox i'm going to talk to what nanobiologist confirmed is just a person like just a regular old gamer on online and talk about where our next gen strategy is and drive home the fact that yep we understand what you want you want authenticity they are doing what i always say i want i think companies should do and that's learn yeah. from youtubers and podcasts and everything else of like just admit your mistakes when you fuck up admit you fucked up and talk about how you want to get better and don't try to be this giant fucking corporation because people don't do that and that's how xbox has gone since the launch of xbox one they've gone to we're people and we're making games for gamers and all of our services are based on gamers and fuck dude when we get to deals of the day the way they fuck, they're crushing it right now uh mm-hmm. but then you look at playstation and they went the opposite where they started off like oh no we're personalities and people to no no we're the playstation brand and so now in a time when how do you make something polished and different when you can't get everybody together and you if you did there'd be questions about like wait how were people in the same room for this did you guys break a shelter in place to go do in like oh god it's so such a fucking quagmire yeah, I, I to your to your original question of what do I think Xbox does for this? I think it is one of those. I, one, I think that you, I I agree with you a lot in terms of what your vision would 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 be for an Xbox event. But I also think like I, where I think they find themselves find themselves in a a little bit of a shitty situation of having to figure out like what this event looks like for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, given that they don't have a Nintendo Direct style thing, or in that they probably hinge this on being like a a physical um press conference you know type of event sure. i think they can I, I think they take that and they turn it into an opportunity to really define like what that nintendo direct thing looks like for them and i think i think you know i think they take those elements of nintendo direct you know and have it be like a you know highly edited highly produced you know well-paced like let's go announcement 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 back to back to back to back kind of thing but i also think you see probably more personality um they use oh, than yeah. you see from either state of player or nintendo right i think you see oh, yeah. a lot more phil spencer i think you see people from their different studios whether it is playground whether it is um uh, ninja theory whether it is uh 343 or, or uh the coalition i think you see those personalities um and like whether it is like before they're presenting their games or whatever it may be i think that's the way they kind of separate themselves is by i by taking that xbox brand and what is like kind of being led by phil spencer right now on the personality side yeah. and really expand that out and make people really familiar with the people behind 
the or the people at least like leading the different games that are part of Xbox Studios. Um, I think that would be the great direction for them to go um, in a way where they're they're kind of getting the best of both worlds by getting people familiar with with the brand, but then also like with with the games and then also with the with the personalities there. Yeah, I do. I think that's what makes the most sense, and I think it's already looking like Xbox is making the best out of a bad situation, and I think that they were set up not knowingly. Probably, hopefully, reading the tea leaves are like this is what yes to what Phil says right. This is what we all want. We don't want like stuffy suits who don't play games the, being the people who are running these companies right you want to know that these people are out there they are playing games they're trying to make the right decisions they're trying to make programmer moves and i mean gamer first moves not like ninja moves not 360 no scopes but mm-hmm. they're how they're doing that rather than be a stuffy corporation so yeah i think yeah. that again I, it's gonna be fascinating man of how this yeah, all, I'm, I'm, i mean i was saying that in 2019 before i knew it was gonna be happening a pandemic but just in general how these two different strategies actually look in the holiday yeah, and we're almost there too. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw both of these events happen in May, right? right. And with the rumor being Xbox in early May and then PlayStation probably in late May. Um, and I'm also with you in terms of PlayStation probably kicking themselves, you know, with, with how they've kind of faded back from the personality side of yeah. things. Um, you you asked the question on PS Love You this this week, and I've been thinking about it ever since. Of like, ha- what is is state of play still a thing? Like, is state yeah. of play still like a thing that they want? to uh to keep fostering or was that just a 2019 plan you know since they didn't have a president they wanted to do to like basically you know put a band-aid over how do they not talk or how are they going to do it and how do you set expectations and then okay we're not showing up so yeah exactly 2020 will pour it on before people even know there's they're missing a state of play yeah here we are you know about to be five months into the year and you're like wait a second there was already one state of play by now there should have been another like what or one coming up and there's no e3 and there's no this like how's it all net out it's gonna be fascinating yeah. uh michael knight wrote in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can and said good morning greg and bless have you thought about the possibility of microsoft phasing out the xbox one x because it isn't that different from the series s the xbox one x has six teraflops and the series x has 12 although teraflops aren't the end-all be-all performance measuring where do you think the series s lockhart falls between the one x and series x thanks for all you do and uh thanks for keeping the shows going through these times we briefly touched on this a little bit yesterday but i guess it wasn't on the nose enough i do think that this is the way you phase out the xbox one period yeah i think that the idea here is because there was this conversation even with gary yesterday of like oh it's gonna be confusing to grandma there's too many xboxes out there if there's xbox one xbox one x xbox one s digital xbox series x xbox lockhart and he's he's not wrong xbox series oh yeah that is a lot but i do think that as they move to this one platform yes the message is that if you own an xbox one guess what you can still play these great games and have these great services but I do think they also stop showing the Xbox One X pretty quickly in commercials, if not already, right? And start moving to, hey, Xbox Lockhart is in the, it's, you know, it is the two machines next to each other. And what yeah. we were talking about yesterday, right, when we were reading again from uh, over here on uh, Jez's article on Windows Central, right? Uh, her thing for the Lockhart is uh, we've, we're we expecting Lockhart to be the four TF, which means teraflop, right? The four teraflop entry point in the next gen yes. gaming. It should effectively replace the Xbox One X. This system is designed to be affordable, but will offer aspects of next-gen experience currently unavailable to past-gen consoles, presumably in the form of NVMe loading speeds and perhaps some limited ray tracing. We have no idea about the capabilities of Lockhart outside of that magical 4TF GPU number, which came alongside more of our detailed Xbox X, no, sorry, Xbox Series X info that turned out to be accurate. So, yes, for me definitely this is the one to come in here and remove the xbox one lineup right that they want you to get the lockhart over the xbox one uh, x even yes and that, uh, go ahead uh, sorry to interrupt but I, yeah oh, no, i think please, please. We, we i think we've had the conversations before uh and i think it might have been like during like our predictions and stuff of like yeah how does like lockhart has been the rumor forever but like how how does xbox release like a series x which is the most powerful version right a series s which is a less powerful more affordable affordable version but then also have the xbox one x like that like at a certain point that message gets very foggy uh to communicate in a way where yeah i think it makes perfect sense to then phase out the xbox one line of consoles and then have the xbox series s come out 
at say three hundred dollars um and be able to kind of allow them to make the claim of hey yeah we have the most powerful box uh with the xbox uh, series x we then also have the most affordable affordable box with the xbox series s um and be able to come at the market from both sides in that way yeah. I, the, the the main thing that that makes me curious in terms of in terms of how they market this is like how how does that go at stores you know i know gary brought up the 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 idea of the grandma picking up the christmas present for the kid right and, and having Timmy to figure wants out like the xbox but there's seven on the shelves yeah it's like oh which one of these xbox do i, do I get the sad do i get the series x do i get the series <laughs> s like what is it um i think the series the series x versus series s conversation is going to be interesting because i imagine for xbox their preferred thing would be for people to get the series x because that's that's oh, yeah. kind of what they're they're leading that's what they're leading this foot off with right like they they showed the series x uh at game awards they've been talking about the series x this whole time and say they reveal the series s in in may with this with this xbox blowout like what is the thing at stores that is guiding people toward buying a series x over a series s especially when the series s is the cheaper option Mm -hmm. you, that's assume, the I have. you assume that and that, that's the thing is even having the series s at launches it's not weird because you want to uh, oh you want you still want ray tracing or whatever it's going to be you want ever whatever bell and whistle you're going to have for a new thing but you want it cheaper here it is but then you do lose this argument of well i you know, it's what we talked about yesterday too i guess and to some extent that playstation 5 having one skew one thing it's the playstation 5 makes sense because playstation 4 was such a runaway success this year or this generation and mm -hmm. so you figure the people who are going to want to adopt that are going to want to have the best machine the coolest thing the nicest tech all this different stuff right xbox doesn't have that same advantage because they were in second place this time around and so they can make the new box for people like us that want the nicest coolest thing but i think they need to they they think they need to have and it's probably true too they need a cheaper option right that still runs the games well Yes, in a base a launch, Xbox One is going to be able to play Halo Infinite, but imagine all the compromises that are going to be there and complications that are going to be there and load times that are going to be there to make that such a suboptimal experience. Whereas I think having an Xbox Series S makes sense because people aren't going to trust them necessarily, right? People aren't going to be sure if they want to invest $500 into this machine right off the bat. How much am I going to use this? What am I going to do with it? What's going on? Maybe if, if it is, you're buying it for a kid. Are they really getting the 8K, whatever the hell resolutions out of these things? No. So it is this idea of you get this to test the waters, but then also open them up and bring them into the ecosystem. And hopefully, I mean, it's all a gateway drug, right? And that's why yeah. it's interesting to wonder about how low they can get the price of an Xbox Series S. Because if you can get it super low and just get it under the TV, then it does become this idea like I always talk about of, oh, well, you get in there and, oh, it also came with a month of Game Pass. What is that? Oh, I have I have uh, X Cloud. What is that? And you start looking into this, building a library, understanding more. We talk about, you know, all the games with gold or free play and all that stuff. Like you start getting the services you're going to have with this in the library. You could actually build off a cheaper Xbox. Suddenly you do maybe you don't even want to go up to the next uh, tier of machine, but you definitely want to play your games there more. Yeah, I and I, part of me wants to, wants to see like what the other um, iterations of the Xbox, I guess, series family might be because, yeah. you know, I imagine the, the Lockhart, the rumors here say nothing about like it being digital only, and I don't, I don't, I can't imagine that it would be a digital only console, um, because that then limits you know who who it can sell uh, sell to. Yeah, but like the idea that maybe midway through the generation, once maybe streaming becomes more of a ubiquitous like accepted thing. I wonder if you just release an Xbox that is a hundred bucks, you know, that is like the Xbox Series E or whatever. I don't know what E will stand for. Extra streaming capability. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like you you release like a hundred dollar version of the Xbox and call it a day and be and, and that is like the series family. Um because yeah, to what to what you're saying, right? Like everything is kind of a gateway. Like I'm sure I'm sure they want to sell the Series X more so than they would want to sell the Series S. Um but you know, getting people into the ecosystem is probably at the at the at the forefront of that's, what their mission statement I, that's is. That's definitely, I think, the mission statement at the launch here, right? Is that I think they even if you are going to be playing on your Xbox One, whether it be a base unit, a sad unit, or an X, right? I think they want you just to get in there and see how great their services are and be excited to play Xbox games again and see this lineup of first parties. And I do think that once you're in there, it is intoxicating to look at how 
how gamer first they are and what they're offering and how this is and how their ecosystem works. And so to get in there, fall in love with it, and then worrying about buying the best system, that's a, that's, that's a whole different argument for them, right? Yeah. Number two on the Roper Report. There is an Animal Crossing financial collapse that people are freaking about out about. Oh, no. Internet. This is Ethan Gotcha over at Kotaku. Animal Crossing's latest update cuts the amount of money players can earn just by letting all their bells sit in the bank. A lesson to all you hoarders out there to get out and spend. The news came by way of a letter from Tom Nook. It was waiting in players' mailboxes following last night's update, which adds new characters and seasonal events. That's right, of course. Uh, Red is in town. Uh, it's Earth Day. You can get your, your shrubs. It's great in there. But anyways, the letter says this, quote, We are writing to inform you that we have reduced the interest rate offered to all savings accounts. The letter from Bank of Nook reads, quote, As an apology for any inconvenience, please enjoy the attached GIF. We appreciate your business. Uh, in a perfect act of trolling, the attached GIF is a rug shaped like a giant bag of bells. Nintendo didn't say why they reduced the interest rate or by how much, leading furious players to speculate on the game subreddit. The previous rate was estimated at around 0.5%. Uh, now it appears to be closer to zero or 0.05%. Oh, with shoot. interest payouts ca capped at 9,999 bells. Apparently, the world of Animal Crossing is in full stimulus mode as well. Today, I shot ahead to May 2021 after earning 63,571 new bells off of my roughly $1.1 million in savings. After downloading the update, all I got for pulling the same temporal hijinks was a paltry 6,579 bells. Oh, no. One theory for the reductions is that many players have amassed giant fortunes thanks to farming tarantula islands or insider trading on the turnip market. Legitimately me. Reducing the interest rate would be one way to keep them from just living off the dividends of their free market enterprising. Another theory is that Nintendo wanted to discourage players from using time travel to collect tomorrow's interest today. Uh, the bank interest get paid. The, bit, the bank interest gets paid out on a monthly basis. Take your switch offline and bump the clock ahead, and you can grab some quick crack, some extra quick cash while animal crossing new horizons rots players turn ups if they try to time travel and get a better price for them there's no similar safeguard for manipulating the bank of nook at the same time just reducing the interest rate wouldn't necessarily be a fix for that either instead it might just push those people already abusing the system to time travel even farther and more often while just while those just playing by the rules have to watch their savings grow at a snail's pace that's awesome anarchy I on the islands I, I fell off of Animal Crossing after the first week, sadly, because just other games came out. Mm -hmm. um, but reading this and hearing stuff like this makes me kind of want to get back into it. Because this sounds like the idea that there is a whole market collapse and Nintendo was trying to figure out how to balance things because people are figuring out how to game the system. Because yeah. you can one, you can time travel, but then also like you, there's the whole um, uh, tarantula Turn thing that I've been seeing on, on Twitter and the in the in the turnip market. Like I've been watching a lot of Ozark, uh, as I've mentioned oh, before yeah, on, the, on, the, on the show. Uh, and this is giving me like hella Ozark vibes um, because in, in Ozark, like Ozark is all about is a show that's all about money laundering and uh, the characters trying to game the system and, and, and make more money in that way. Yeah. I like the idea that Animal Crossing kind of has its own kind of Ozark going on, going on within it. Um, it's funny because when I got the letter last night, I downloaded the update immediately, obviously as soon as i saw it on twitter and so when i got in there and i got the letter in the bell bag i was like all right whatever and i hadn't i haven't been gaming the system in interest i haven't that hasn't been one of my methods to i have like a, i have 11 million bells in the in the bank right now i've just been doing it by the turnip game of going out every sunday buying shit loads of turnips waiting till a kind of funny best friend is like hey this is what happened or gary or adam nickerson hits me up and it's like hey i have a dodo code that's selling at 650 or above and we go over there and sell it all and you make them you know millions of bells so the idea that this is happening is hilarious, even if it would have gotten me. Because what I really want Animal Crossing to do, because I, I, it's there's a lot of people who are playing the turnip game bless, mm -hmm. and rather than Which do is the stock I, market, right? Exactly, exactly. Great gotcha. point. Sorry, if you don't know, on Sundays the, a, a character comes to Daisy May comes to town. She sells you turnips. Then Monday through Saturday, when you go to the store Nook's uh, Cranny, you can check in and see what the turnip prices are, and you can sell them. The turnip turnip prices you get. One in the morning and one in the uh, afternoon. Uh, like I said, Monday through Saturday. Sunday, you can only buy turnips. You can't sell them. And so it's this game of stocks, yeah, where you invest your money in them and then try to, you know, you try to buy low and sell high. Uh, it's always been that way in Animal Crossing. But the addition here of online and where we are with social media means that you can you can buy and just look for the best price over on our subreddit. There's always a bunch up there on the Animal Crossing the subreddit. Usually in our own Twitch chat for shows like this, there's people shouting out if they have a great price. 
some people don't think that's cheating by expanding it to the uh, basically infinite market of the internet and instead, you know, have uh, Excel spreadsheets and that, you know, people have tried to crack the game as to when this is going to happen and when you'll get a better payout and what there's like, there are like um, uh, patterns that you can track and kind of, okay, you can forecast when you're going to have a big day on your island or one of your friends is going to do. What I would love to see, you know, if, if they're on top of the interest rate this way, right? What I would love to see, and even though it would fuck me over, is that on a Sunday, you know, in normal business as usual, people, you know, spend millions to try to make millions. And then there's an update pushed on Monday that totally fucks everybody. Or even on that Sunday that you just don't even notice there's an update pushed. That means that mm -hmm. stocks will never get high. They will never get oh high. My God. So people just take a fucking bath. And it is like the fucking, you know, black or whatever. Yeah, no, I was going to say Black Friday, right? Yeah, Black Friday. No, that's not right. What am I thinking of when the stocks crash? Yeah. Black Friday is like when we all go shopping, right? Was it Black Tuesday? Well, Black Tuesday, thank you. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, there's just like the black week of whatever of May where everything yeah. went bad for Animal Crossing and everybody just let their turnips rot. Wait, wasn't so, Black yeah. Friday named after Black Friday, though? Wasn't, I thought no, that was Black, like the original. No. Black Friday's uh, thing is that most businesses or most sales, I guess, or most retailers, and this I don't know if it's true anymore, back in the day it was, uh, don't make a profit all year long with the exception of Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving when everybody goes out to sale to, for, to buy stuff. And that usually pushes their ledgers back into the black. Gotcha. What, I'm not sure if that's still the case anymore. I don't, I don't think that's entirely true, but like, which part is it? my my the, my like, understanding of the origin or th what the origin is? The what like the it's it's not that they're not in the black for most of the time, but like that is the first big jump that they get of the year. Okay. Or no, I'm sorry, not the first big jump, but like the first so close, big jump of the close. season before Christmas comes in. Everyone's uh, in the black that day is the thing. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you know. It's, yeah. I mean, the balance.com says Black Friday is the name given to the shopping day for Thanksgiving. It was originally called Black. It was originally called Black Friday because the volume of shoppers created traffic accidents, and sometimes even that's not true. That's nah, not. It's a filthy whore. Balance.com. I can't trust you. Business Insider. I feel like I can trust you. Uh, oh no, it, it's not good. Same no. deal. All right, we're reading from uh, businessinsider.com. Why is it called Black Friday? Uh, Noah Fr Fr Friedman. Uh, why is it called Black Friday? Most people know Black Friday is the day after Thanksgiving when stores open early and offer various sales. These stores are often in the black, profitable that day. But the true story of Black Friday is darker. The term Black Friday was first used on September 24th, 1869, when two investors uh, drove up the price of gold and caused a crash that day. The stock market dropped 20% and foreign trade stopped. Farmers suffered a 50% 50 50 dip in wheat and corn harvest value. In the 50s, Philadelphia police used the Black Friday term to refer to the day between Thanksgiving and the Army-Navy game when huge crowds of shoppers and tourists went into the city that Friday and cops had to work long hours to cover the crowds and traffic. Merchants in the area uh, tried to change the name Black to Big Friday, but the alternative name never caught on. By the late 80s, Black Friday had spread nationally with more positive red to black backstory. Oh. Yeah, so that's what I... I think I that's the story I, I, that I originally heard. I think it's just... A lot of people use it because it sounds fucking cool. You know what I mean? It does sound cool. Yeah, I mean, you know it mean? Sounds, it sounds like cool. a bunch of different stories and different people using for different reasons. Number three on the Roper Report, the Stadia app has crossed a million downloads. This is James Batchelor over at GamesIndustry.biz. Stadia has received a shot in the arm thanks to Google to a Google promotion, which now means the streaming service has been installed on more than one has been installed more than one million times globally. Sensor Tower data issued to GamesIndustry.biz shows the all-time mobile installs for Stadia app have passed this milestone earlier this month, thanks primarily to the offer of a free two-month subscription to Stadia Pro. The promotion was introduced the week of April 6th, which now stands as the service's biggest week for adopting users with 225,000 installs globally, both across iOS and Android. Sensor Tower notes this was 50% higher than the 150 installs seen during Stadia's launch week back in November. Uh, wow. The average daily first-time installs recorded after the two-month trial went live on April 8th sorry, has been 326% higher than in the 30 days leading up to it. Time will tell whether or not the free trial leads to more paying subscribers or if there will be a steep drop-off when the two-month trial ends. Blessing at AOU Jr. Does this surprise you? This, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. This comes off to me as both 
good and bad news. Like the bad yeah. news being that like Stadia has not been doing good. Uh, but and that's something that everybody's known. But like the this promotion seems to have done super well for them, right? Three hundred twenty six percent. You know that's that's huge. Um, them having a higher uh, a higher a higher number of adopted users within the week than at launch. You know that's huge for them. I think that's going to do very well for them. The big question is like how many of those people stay on google stadia yeah. after their yeah, their yeah. free membership ends and i can't imagine like un- un- unless like google stadia has like some big releases over the next couple months i don't see people sticking with it and so yeah. this number really doesn't do as much for me given that yeah totally the yeah the ongoing saga of uh stadia and how it'll actually net out in the end and if it'll actually be a competitor in any way is fascinating to watch because cool yeah. tech for sure but then just such a bungled launch and then just a bungled messaging. Like, where does this go? You know what I mean? They're, they're definitely at the place where they have to play for the long game now. Mm-hmm. Like, the launch coming coming out to such a low number. Um, and them, like, them having, like, the resources to be like, oh, yeah, let's give people who have YouTube Red, right? Let's let's give them access to, to Stadia for some time, right? Like them, Like, them having those resources to try and bump up those numbers and get Google Stadium to as many people's hands as possible yeah. can help them in the long run. Um, but really what it's going to come down to is how good their their service is able to develop and get better over the over the next however many months, right? Like unless they're unless they're able to really step things up, like they're going to get their lunch eaten by totally. xCloud and whatever totally. Amazon might be working on. And that's the um, thing is for me, like I, I think it's crazy for us doing this show daily again. And I, I love that we get to cover the industry to that minute level. Right. Uh, but the fact that, you know, we're about to go into the list. Right. And it's like I am looking at it right now and I see one Stadia game on it. The fact that we're still to the point where it's not ubiquitous that you're launching a game on Xbox, PlayStation, PC in stadia is crazy like that's yeah. the killer for them of like how i it, oof, man like your library can't compete on that level that's trouble and that's their biggest tr- thing is like i was thinking you know when it was pitched and we played it and we did all the stuff that it would be a pretty quick run-up in the granted i we're only four months into 2020 but still that there'd be more than one game on here and granted i'm glancing but still i i, I feel like i don't read stadia often when i go throughout today yeah no that's the thing like i feel like stadia rarely comes up and i feel like the conversation uh of stadia is going to be, become more dire the more we talk about xbox series x and Dude, playstation 5 as soon, again as soon as xbox says and we, uh, you're talking about next gen i'm sorry i kind of cut you off yeah but as soon as they talk about it they come out with x cloud and like they said they would and say all right cool guess what the the you know uh, uh restrictions are off x cloud now for the beta it's all your games and it just yeah, is yeah. your that, games that you own already fuck man yeah, and the more they develop that, then the more they build that. And like, if they get to the point where your Xbox Game Pass library all just works with XCloud, that's yeah. when it's like, what's the point of even having Stadia? Because XCloud works on PC. Like, what are you going to do? Exactly. Uh, blessing. I'm excited to tell you what Stadia game is in out today. But first, I want to tell you about patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Of course, you can go there to get your questions uh, read on the show. You can get this show uh, with the exclusive post show, and you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, Let's tell you who's our sponsors today. Uh, first up, it's Brooklyn. Uh, bringing comfort into your home is the ultimate form of self-care. And now it's more than, important than ever to take care of yourself and each other. You spend a third of your life in the sheets. Don't you want them to be insanely comfortable? So put comfort first like with new bedding, loungewear, towels, and more from brooklinen.com. Ladies and gentlemen, you know we love Brooklyn. Uh, you know I only sleep on Brooklyn and sheets. I tell, tell you about this all the time. Of course, I picked them out myself. Mix and match. It's an old story. But more importantly, starting April 25th, that is two days from now. Brooklyn is having their biggest sale yet, the birthday sale. Get everything from bedding to towels to loungewear and more at savings you wouldn't believe. Uh, I assure you, I will be going there and buying towels. If I'm lying, I'm dying. You saw me tell Gary that and then yell at Jen yesterday. She was sitting where the bunny is. She's not there today. Um, Brooklyn and products help you find comfort in little things, morning routines, extra soft sheets, plush towels, etc. cetera. Uh, and of course, everybody here has been sleeping on Brooklyn and sheets and having a great time. I don't know, Blessing, I don't think you have yet, right? You haven't made the no, switch. No, I've, I've not. And I, I've, been, I've been waiting for that delivery, Greg. Well, I'm telling you, it's coming up. And you, April 25th is a sale, but then we have a thing here, right? So you can get it right. Because you like softness, Blessing. You like comfort. I do love softness. You like essentials to help comfort. you relax. Yeah, exactly. So Brooklyn, you think I like these sheets? 
No, take throw them away right now. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brooklinen.com is the perfect place to find all the comforts of, for your home. Uh, they're so confident in their product that all their sheets, comforts, loungewear, and towels come with a lifetime warranty. The birthday sale kicks off April 25th, and you don't want to miss it. You can get your biggest savings of the year on sheets, bedding, towels, loungewear, and their newest Hammond and Linen collections. And if you don't want to wait, you can get 10% off your first order and free shipping on the all-new sheet stuff uh, right now when you use the promo code GAMES only at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E.com. Use the promo code GAMES. Our next sponsor is ExpressVPN. We all know ExpressVPN helps your helps you protect your privacy and security online, but here's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Now that so many of us are stuck at home, it's only a matter of a time until you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. What if you could spend this whole week binging Doctor Who on UK Netflix? Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you can, thanks to the ExpressVPN app. You change your location to the UK, you refresh Netflix, and guess what? That's it. You're in the UK, governor. Uh, ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries, so just think about all the Netflix libraries you can have access to. We've said it before, we'll say it again. ExpressVPN has always been very, very good to us. Uh, we When we used to do their sponsorship reads, it was very much about hey you can use this to protect your ip address which kevin did and so we were like hey that's great we're protecting ourselves and everything else at the studio but now you can use it for more nerdy stuff like getting the best uh, stuff on netflix uh bbc iplayer hulu youtube and more uh it's so it's just simple you just do it on the app and there you go you're you're in london you're in paris blessing wouldn't you like to move your room to paris right now bonjour there it is. Look, that's how easy it is. No, no. Let me tell you right now, the cops are going to come by and be like, wait, are you really in Paris? They don't know what's going on. Uh, ExpressVPN is also compatible with all your devices, your phones, your media consoles, your smart TVs, and more. Uh, you can watch what you want on your personal device or the big screen wherever you are. If you visit the special link right now at expressvpn.com slash games, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash games blessing if i wanted to know what game was coming to stadia today where would i go the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny games daily show host each and every weekday out today animal crossing's got that earth day update we talked about borderlands 3 is getting that cartel update we've talked about before moto gp20 is out on playstation 4 xbox one switch pc and google stadia whoa Code Realize Future Blessings is on Switch. And I feel like you got to review that blessing. I mean, I played some of the first one, actually. If it was Code Realize Future Gregs, I'd have to play it, you know? Oh, yeah, of course. 112 Operator is on PC and Mac. Uh, XCOM Chimera Squad is on PC. Sunless, Sunless Sea Submariner Edition is on Switch. A Little Busters Converted Edition is on Switch. Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack is on PlayStation 4. Cloud Punk is on PC. Pick Cross S4 is on Switch. Filament is on PC. Aces of the Multiverse is on PS4. Damaged in Transit is on Switch. Smile Basic 24 is on Switch. Yamasuchi After is on Switch and PC. Yamasuchi is a Remaster is on Switch. Broken Lines is on Switch. Hang the Kings is on Switch. Esports Legend is on Switch, and I assume it's about Andy Cortez. Uh, Tim Pooh's Treasure is on PC and Mac. Rebel Cops is out now on iOS and Android. Uh, GTA Online has an update. Today marks the debut of Gerald's Last Play, featuring six brand new contact missions across Los Santos as players work with Gerald to score big in their criminal endeavors. Hmm. Uh, Apple Arcade Games, Sneaky Sasquatch, Tangle Tower, and Down in Bermuda all get updates. And then Supernatural is out on Oculus Quest. Blessing, I said earlier I was feeling really good today. I credit it to Supernatural. Super oh, really? new fitness app that's out on uh, uh, Oculus Quest. I don't know if you saw this go through. Did you see this go through? I did not see this. I keep my I keep my ear to the quest. You know what I mean? I want to know what it's talking about, what's going on. Mm-hmm. Supernatural is this thing uh, that's meant to be kind of like a Netflix of workouts where they're uploading stuff on the daily from different trainers. The trainers, when you're doing it, are in your ear talking about it. You're overlooking all these different vistas or whatever, but it's more about getting you moving it's monitoring your heart rate it's keeping track of you know all the different stuff your scores it's games mixed with workouts mixed with a personal trainer or whatever it sounded cool and i since lockdown have not been able to go to the gym which i was actually good at and 
I haven't, I, me and Jen walk all the time and she's got me started on yoga recently, but both of those aren't like as cardio heavy as I think the Stairmaster was when I really liked that. And so doing this today and actually sweating and being out of breath again, like I still have those stupid fucking endorphins again from exercise where you actually like exercising. I fucking hate it. Uh, but I use this today and I liked it. Now there's a bunch of caveats for me personally right now, right? Where I think of it, this is a preview based on one day of this workout program. So stick with me and we'll see how long it lasts. And if I change my opinions as I go, my day one report on it, right? Is that obviously it's Oculus Quest. So the tracking's great. Um, I don't, didn't think I would like the personal trainer talking to you and like, all right, you're doing well. All right, this blah, blah, blah. But it's reading how well you're doing, it says. So it like bases on that. You can't fail. It's not like that or whatever. Um, when I first started it, I was like, oh, it's just Beat Saber. Like, you know, because there are things coming with arrows and I have different things to oh, hit, that's right? Cool. But then in Grant, and I want to put a caveat on this as well, that I haven't, I have not done Beat Saber 360. Um, this is a 360 workout in terms of the things are coming and then there's certain ones you hit and they have a line attached to them, which means, you know, to spin to the next area, to spin around and you have things coming at you then. But then, and what I feel the most honestly from it is that triangles come at you now as well and what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do then is do a squat to get through them or do a lunge to each to one of the sides to get through them again beat saber had that in terms of walls coming at you and things to dodge or whatever but this one you know having no ifs ands or buts about it and be like we're a workout app obviously we want you doing the squat we want you doing uh you know lunges or whatever i was using them differently than i feel like i played it in it and my quads are fucking killing me from all the squats i did today in this game as the because the triangles come through and you got to squat to go through them and then they trace you back up and all this stuff it's to music as well like beat saber but it's a ro ever rotating thing so like i did a lizzo song today i did a charlie pluth song today or whatever they have the different workouts there with the different trainers and like recommendations on what to do really had a good time with it is, is um, it a one-time purchase no that's the thing about oh. it is that it's a 20 dollars subscription monthly now if you go and do it you get your first month free you can quit and not get charged before it gets, it's very clear when it's going to charge you again there's an app that has all this information and profiles and you can make friends and track leaderboards and communicate through it and all this different stuff so right now i want to say my hang up on it but at the end of day one it's like all right cool but i'm still at the point of like would i be down with this for 20 dollars a month you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that seems it, like a steep price. Would I do this and then bounce and just play Beat Saber 360? And so again, not having tried that yet, which I need to, I, I'll get back to you on that. Obviously, I want to keep doing this too. So to have a more of a plan in terms of like what it's tracking, how harder it's getting, what the daily workouts are adding. Because like when you start, uh, they introduce you to the trainers they have, I guess, or whatever. And they're in front of you doing the thing, showing you what they want you to do and blah, blah, blah. And then the first program I did today was very much the trainer being like, hey, you know, we're in shelter in place too, so I'm not in front of you. I was like, oh, fuck. So it is like, it is current. It is, you know what I mean? They're not like just banking mm -hmm. content and putting it out. It is very much like, hey, this is how this works. We give you new, up uh, new. I don't know if it's daily. I shouldn't talk on that. But we give you, you know, this thing every yeah. time. And here we go. So yeah, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed it. I think for sure for, um, you know 30 day trial for free or whatever i want to i'm going to keep going and see what's up with it but it, that does sound super cool like my one hang up with beat Saber right now is that there's not really like a workout mode or yeah. like like something dedicated to working out like i know they added a new song recently that was like seemed to be like a workout song that i haven't tried yet that i do want to try out but uh this sounds really cool like the idea that it is kind of what you enjoy from beat saber but it is focused on on working out and it's and it has periodic updates and they Sounds do a good really job dope. of it too, of like, you know, the trainer in your ear of like, you know, it's not, it, it we're, Beat Saber, I felt, and I love Beat Saber. I'm not at all putting on Beat Saber. Beat Saber for a workout, it works me out. But the problem is I get so hung up on trying to get a better score or trying to hit the things just right that I feel like yeah. it becomes too much of a game for it to be a workout. And this one in particular is very much like, if you're fucking stuff up, it, which I was, she's like in your ear, like, don't worry about it. Like, it's not about that. It's about feeling this out. You know, it, she was like, you know, it's your first time you're a beginner. And I was like, it, it was interesting. And I don't know how much of that is mm -hmm. canned or how much of that is reading the actual situation, but I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to doing it. Does, again. it, does it feel full body? Like my arms it, right now, my arms in uh, quads for sure. Uh, they have a couple different ones there where they want me spinning my core more, but I don't, I don't feel that right now, but maybe I will eventually. Mm. Does this in seem general, like something I'll ever come to PlayStation? Oh, I doubt it. I, I don't I don't think it would and I think it's not the fact of my I guess I'm talking to my ass a little bit on that yeah, I don't think it'd be 60 right yeah and that's the biggest thing is I think the tech would be the hold up too and then I think their vision for it being like apparently you know I'm, I have a press release here that they sent out today um 
Because this sounds this sounds like something I want to try out, but I don't have a quest. Yeah, Tim already stole the one, the one from the office, so you can't do that either. You could have stolen. There's one from the office. Yeah, we have an office quest. I don't. I'm sure you could ask that. Tim. He's not playing it that much. I would imagine. He says he's playing it all the time. Oh really? I'm sorry. Please. No, I, don't, I don't know if he said that. I don't know if he said that. I, I have um, one too. I know which one. Do so I, it's daily on demand workouts are personalized rhythm maps designed by choreographers and coached by top fitness trainers. I think it would be the thing of like I think updating it daily on the PlayStation would be trouble, but I don't know if they're oh, really yeah. updating it daily. Like I'm not sure, so I'm not. You know what I mean? But yeah, tech wise for sure, like the cord three sixteen around. I think you'd have to yeah. redesign it to be on that half plane, and I bet that they aren't about that. Is it also, on? And I know I'm asking a lot of questions about this thing. No, but is hey, it on, I'm not giving you a preview. Is it just on the Quest, or right. is it also on like other Oculus things? To my knowledge, it's just on the quest. They only talk about the quest, uh, gotcha. but that's the only one I have, so I haven't really dug into it. But it goes right here: uh, design for Oculus Quest and paired with your smartphone. Yeah, nothing mm -hmm. in there. Supernatural provides users with expertly coached daily workouts, detailed fitness tracking, an expansive catalog of music, and a chance to exercise in the world's most beautiful lo lo locations without ever leaving home. I was in Iceland today. No big deal. I that's digress. pretty cool. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. Well, maybe I'll start doing a nice. Gary thing of like my fitness journey. Uh, new dates for you. Um, Dory, well, it's like Damon, so it's got to be Dory and stories, story of seasons. <laughs> Dory Shut up and let me talk. All right. <laughs> Tomorrow you host the fucking show and you can pronounce the games how you want. PlayStation 4 is on September 4th. Uh, Nintendo Switch is getting Lonely Mountains downhill on May 7th. And then uh, Super Mega Baseball 3 will release with cross-platform play on Switch, Xbox One, PS4, Steam, May 13th. Deals of the day for you. Xbox coming out swinging. Xbox Game Pass is getting Red Dead Redemption 2 on May 7th. Whoa. Right? And then Xbox uh, free play days are this weekend. Uh, you can start right now, I guess. Uh, Bleeding Edge, uh, Madden NFL 20, and Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. Each of these titles are free to play for Xbox Live Gold and Game Pass Ultimate members uh, through Sunday the 26th at midnight. So I guess 12.01 a.m. Uh, Monday morning, the 27th, my birthday. That's, that, it, once these go oh, away man. and you can't play anymore, feel free to send me a birthday. I think. Um, Blessing. Greg, I took the Xbox reader mail questions and I put them into the Xbox story because I'm smart to make a show. So let's move on to Squad Up. This is where one of you writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Give me your name, username, platform choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you and everybody plays games together. Today, Devin needs help on PlayStation 4. He's got a good username. His PSN name is The Last of Devin. <laughs> <laughs> like Last of Us, The Last of Devin. D-E-V-I-N, all one word. Uh, hey, guys. I purchased Fallout 76 on launch day, Power Armor Edition, because Fallout is my favorite game series of all time, besides Zelda. Don't worry, I sold all the toy crap that came with it. Just wanted the Steelbook. Never played it because of the negativity surrounding it, and I was honestly afraid to ruin my perfect vision of Fallout, or it would ruin my uh, perfect vision of Fallout for me. Enter Wastelanders. Uh, since it's quarantine time and I'm laid off, don't worry, doing great. Good, I was worried. Uh, it seemed like the perfect time to jump in. Long story short, I'm hooked, and this is my new life since I don't work anymore. Besides my three-year-old, I don't have much going on, so I'm looking for people to squad up and explore Appalachia. And I know it's Appalachia or whatever. Don't even try to correct me. I hate it. We tried this. When Fall 76 happened, it was my living nightmare trying to say this word. It wasn't like uh, Appalachia. Can, but then some people are like, it's Appalachia. Oh, and like they, then they were like, oh. then they started arguing with each other. Like even these West Virginia people, like you think Kansas people are bad. You know what? Nothing's as bad as Kansas people. I digress. <laughs> I can play afternoons when she naps and after 8 p.m. when she's asleep. <laughs> I played until 1 a.m. last night just building my camp. Hit me up. Thanks, guys. Really glad to hear Greg and Bless talk about how great the new up update is yesterday on, on PSI Love You XO. XO. No problem, last of Devin. I hope many people come visit your camp, give you some caps. What are we out. playing? I don't know, dude, because uh, Predator. Now, granted, oh, very man. different. Yeah. I mean, very different, but there's just so many things to do. There's so many games to play because I also want to play Persona 5 because Barrett sold me. Dude, I'm telling you, too, that was the same thing. I didn't want to say it because it'll get me in trouble. But, like, I, 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 I downloaded it again last night. You did? did Persona like, 5? Royal, Royals on the PS5 or 4. Dude, if you're playing it, then that's going to be motivation for me to play because then we can talk about it together. We can talk about our journey together. They don't see it, and then I'm not on mm -hmm. the record saying I'm playing it because if I say I'm on the record playing it, I'll be hounded the rest of my life for it, as I have been oh, man. all the other stuff. So I haven't. I'm really excited about this. There, but it's that thing of like I thought maybe it would complement Predator well because Predator is going to be something you jump in, you kill some guys for a while, you move on. It would complement Animal Crossing where I'm just fucking planting shrubs. Who the fuck cares? Maybe I do this, but then is this game going to be like seven months of playing it at an hour at a time? Is that good? I don't know. So I'm, I'm not committing to anything, but I'm letting you know that, yes, I also downloaded it. 
but I also don't want Barrett to feel like he's right. And Barrett can only read lips. It's a little little known fact people don't know about. Yeah, no, oh, for sure. When he, when, he, when Barrett watches the show because it's his, it's his job, he has to watch it with, through the video and not the audio. Ladies and gentlemen, let's check in with You're Wrong. If you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, you go to You're Wrong. That's right, kindoffunny.com slash You're Wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screwed up. I can move this around. I guess. Um, Nanobiologist says, is the concert shirt a fundraiser? I can make a command for it. Uh, it's not, Nano. When I tweet it today, it's still like you if you wouldn't mind making a command for it for the Twitch to the uh, chat tonight because uh, I do have that still here. But, uh, you know, the, the Grimecraft Kind of Funny concert shirt is not for the charity thing I'm doing. It's just for come and get it and have fun um nanobiologist says an xbox may reveal lines up with history the xbox one reveal uh was shown off may 2013 i thought we said that yeah uh, we did like, yeah okay oh here's one i wanted from nano uh it was eight days after phil spencer announced he was using the series x as his home console that it was revealed at the tgas bo bam um uh gleager says or maybe g ledger uh says XCOM Chimera Squad releases tomorrow. I pulled that from Kotaku. I believe you. Maybe it's out in Australia or something. Oi, Governor. I don't know. Somebody tries Ignacio Rojas tries to get me to say Damon right. I'm not gonna do it. Um Gondor's Condor says important note about Red Dead coming to Game Pass. GTA 5 is leaving Game Pass. Interesting. Hmm. And I will do that. Nanobiologist uh, tweet me and I'll do that for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's the show. For now, of course. Remember, we have a post show to do. You can catch on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, tomorrow it'll be blessing hosting with me and shotgun having a good time out here celebrating the end of another week. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you know. Are you excited to die in Predator tomorrow? Because I'm gonna kill you. I mean, are you sure you're gonna be playing as the Predator? Because no, no, we I'm might be sure. on the same team, you know. Well, <laughs> you in, in, in those situations, we will kill the predator. Okay, gotcha. Nick's cool. gonna play. He'll he's gonna be terrible at it. We'll kill him, no problem. Oh, for sure. If Nick becomes the predator. That's be the it. easiest game I've ever played. <laughs> That's right, Nick sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, remember this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday, variety of platforms, nerdy news you need to know about in the video game world. If you like the show, please head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Catch the post show we're about to. If you can't do that, I understand. Maybe toss us a follow on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Maybe give us your Amazon Prime Twitch Prime subscription on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games remember you have to give it away every 30 days it doesn't automatically renew even if you have amazon prime and never use twitch it'd be awesome if you went and did it for us uh of course you can just go and subscribe to us on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or you can like us share us review us on the podcast service of your choice until next time we got a post show to do we love and respect you